I think FNAF fighting games can be split into three genres. The games that scare you, the games that challenge you, and the games where you fuck the robots. This is Day Shifted Freddy's, a visual novel trilogy that falls under that last category. Instead of fending off dead kids at night, you work the day shift and make your own decisions. Give out pizza to customers, wear a mascot suit, but whatever you do, don't, don't do that. So, how did this series go from a vile sh** to post from 2016, to its third entry being regarded as the best FNAF fan game ever made? Well, let's start at the very beginning. Day Shift at Freddy's 1 is by far the most simple and sane of the trilogy, because when it was released in April of 2016, it was nothing more than a joke game made in an RPG maker. You're starting your first day at Freddy's, and you're introduced to Phone Guy, the manager of this location. He gives you a tour around the restaurants, giving you a rundown of the stage, prize corner, scary hallway, and the safe room. Your main objective today is to put on that mascot suit in the safe room and go entertain children, but before that, you have to sign the contract. Everybody has. You're now free to explore the pizzeria using the camera system. Clicking on any camera within reach will take you to that room, where you're given a list of stuff you can interact with. Personally, I talked to the animatronics, laughed at Bonnie, and um question my loud decisions. I also checked out the prize corner. This is Matt, the prize corner worker. He sells guitars and explosives. And finally, I decided to follow Phone Guy's instructions and head to the safe room. But there's someone in the safe room. This is Purple Guy, the main antagonist of the Day Shift at Freddy's series. He tells you that he can't leave. The company has dirt on him for what he did, and the contract Phone Guy just made you sign binds you here forever too, in this dead-end pizzeria. So, he has an offer for you. You're a clean slate. He needs a fresh pair of hands to do some work, and you're innocent. They wouldn't suspect you. Back in the day, he got to Freddy's restaurant shut down by murdering five children, but now the police know his face. If you use the suits in front of you and lure five children into the back room and do his work for him, He'll make it worth your while. This is the first big decision in the entire series, leading up to over 45 different endings across the trilogy. Will you swear to protect the children, or join him and get your freedom back? Me? I decided to join him. But not before dying in the safe room because I was too slow pussing on the Springlock suit. A suit covered with crossbeams, wires, and other animatronic devices. If you get damp or move too fast, then those parts come loose. Fast. Just try not to bleed out in front of the guests. I also then got fired for setting the restaurant on fire, telling kids to smoke, urinating the Springlock suits, and... Uh... Oh, oh my god. I forgot to mention, not only can you get fired for literally eating salad, but the humour in this game aged like milk. You know, most FNAF games try to be somewhat scary, except for that one. We don't, we don't talk about that one. But Day Shift at Freddy's is scary in its own way, with its terrible humour. Being made in 2016, it's filled with dead memes and shock humour. The most infamous of these is the Grand Canyon meme, where our favourite purple antagonist threw Foxy off the Grand Canyon. But the most popular joke by far is the the Fox meme. Now, okay, this franchise has never been for kids. It's always been for mature audiences. But when you put a joke like that within a franchise related to FNAF, it's gonna attract certain audiences. But having edgy humour isn't necessarily a bad thing. Day Shift at Freddy's has spawned some of the most iconic lines in FNAF history. Like, yeah, I'm not reading that out loud. But it actually took a lot of these lines from another game, because the main inspiration for this humour was from a game called Five Nights at Boy. <laughs> okay, dude. Released in 2014 on Tumblr, it's an RPG. That's for sure. The game is a crude, offensive, and stupid parody of Five Nights at Freddy's, where your main goal is to shit on the security cameras. I wish I was f***ing joking. It contains dead memes from 2014, Satanism, and classic lines like, Are you ready for Freddy? A line that the literal Blumhouse account has used when promoting the FNAF movie. Its degenerate humour was the main inspiration behind the first day shift, with it even copying some lines word for word. Oh, and also, Direct Doggo was drunk for a few parts of the element. Can't remember which though. Anyway, back to Day Shift 1. You and Dave finally gather the five children in the back room, and... Sorry kids, next time. Don't trust f***ing furries. After the end of each day, you get to play one of Day Shift 1's many mini games. They're used to progress the story and represent what happens a few hours after your day shift. 
for a shit post in 2016, this is some really well made pixel art. Tonight, you're tasked with giving all the small children you just murdered a, a party hat? But while we're here in an arcade styled minigame, let's talk about some of the vile arcade machines you can play in the first day shift at Freddy's. If you head to the arcade area, there's three options. Starting with the Bread Bear game, a Space Invaders game where you play as Purple Guy, and it, it just derails so fast. By the end of the game, you end up fighting the creator of the game, and if you beat it, you get fired. There's also another one called, um, oh my god, no, no, no. But the final one, the happiest day minigame is broken. If you head to Matt and buy his, buy his wrench <laughs> and then head back to the arcade and fix the happiest day minigame, you're presented with this. They know what you did they will have their happiest day. Okay, let me explain what this means. In each of the three day shift at Freddy's games, there are always two significant routes that branch off into the other endings. Firstly, the purple guy routes, where you follow his commands, becoming a murderer, and... And then, there's the happiest day routes. If you refuse to help Dave and fix the happiest day arcade machine, you'll meet the puppet. The puppet thanks you for refusing to help Dave, but it tells you that it's up to you if you want the children to see their happiest day. What does this mean though? Throughout the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, the happiest day is a term used to describe an event where all the victims of the Freddy's restaurants gather to have a party and put their own souls to rest. To have the happiest day they never got to have. It was first used in the Five Nights at Freddy's 3 good ending, where you gathered all the lost souls and went to their happiest day party, putting the vengeful souls to rest, giving them the happiest day they never got to have. So how do you get to that in Day Shift at Freddy's 1? Well, the puppet gives you a list of each of the children's passions, and if you want to help them, you have to carry out their last wishes. But the only problem? Is there a bit scuffed? <laughs> for Freddy, you have to rickroll the guests. And for Bonnie, you have to give him his face back. For Chica, you have to serve a pepperoni pizza. And for Foxy, you have to destroy the salad bar with a crowbar. And finally, for Golden Freddy, you have to blow up a urinal with a firecracker that you buy from Matt. If you manage to complete the puppet's tasks, it will influence the ending of the game, but you'll see that later. For now, let's move on to day two. All you have to do today is to dispose of the four bodies, with Purple Guy saying he'll take care of the last one. I wonder what that means. We only had a close call with Phone Guy today, so nothing too serious. But on day three, the police are here, and they're conducting an investigation on the missing children. The animatronics even look a bit odd. You head over to see Purple Guy in a safe room, but he seems panicked. The police know his face. If he leaves the room, he'll be questioned, so he tasks you with destroying a few cameras so he can safely escape the building without getting caught by the police. Destroy each camera and then head back to Purple Guy, who tells you that the animatronics are possessed by the children. Yeah, that was kind of obvious, but for now, head home and get some rest, because Purple Guy has something very special planned for tomorrow. Like I mentioned earlier, after every day, you get to play a minigame that's a representation of what takes place a few hours after your shift. In this one, you're playing as Phone Guy. The police are conducting a further investigation into the pizzeria, checking each room for clues on where the five missing children went. But you notice a ghost bear leading you to the back room. The Phone Guy knows where the four bodies you threw in the dumpster are and what Dave did, but you? You've managed to pull the wool over his eyes. The last body. That's where Dave hit it. It was in his suit the whole time. That's what Purple Guy meant. Play it cool. You can cover this up. You can't let them find the suit. Not this time. First thing tomorrow, this room is being boarded up. It's all up to you now, Scott. On the fourth day, you arrive, but the door is locked. Then a familiar face walks out. Phone Guy explains that the police have closed the restaurant, but we have one more event that's scheduled for tomorrow a birthday. Make sure you're there. It's very important that you're there to help me. Please. Phone guy seems desperate, but just as you're about to leave, purple guy appears. Oh, look who it is. Did you hear about phone face sealing the safe room up? He's sealing that honey monster suit away so the cops can't find it. By the way, come inside. I have something interesting to show you. Tony has probably told you about the Fred bad room. Correct. The room. The room that Phone Guy mentioned on the first day to never go inside. Well, inside are the two suits that were originally used for Purple Guy's first murders. Fredbear and Rat. Phone Guy told everyone to never activate the suits again, but as a reward for helping him out, Purple Guy will let you choose which one he releases onto the birthday party tomorrow. Because that one last party tomorrow 
is a setup. Fungi doesn't know you helped murder the children, but he's still trying to frame you to save the restaurant from being shut down. So, it's time to choose. This is Fredbear, originating from a realistic fan edit of Nightmare Fredbear from 2015. And Farfor, an original character from an old controversial show that aired in 2007 called Tomorrow's Pioneers. It included Disney lookalikes that said things to influence the young audience to hate whatever group of people they targeted. The creator of Mickey Mouse's last surviving child commented on how the show was pure evil. So, which one do you choose? You meet the phone guy at the prize corner. You know he set you up. He tells you to head to the now unlocked safe room and suit up for the birthday. You meet Dave there and put on the cool cat suit. Dave tells you the animatronics he rigged are in the security office, ready to be released. So, you head out to the party, but the animatronics are just staring at you. They know what you did, they know their time is limited, and if they want to see their happiest day, the time to strike is now. You make a quick escape by breaking into the sealed safe room, but you're cornered by the police and phone guy. And that's the last moment Dave appears. I have a surprise for Elor. We knew about this thing operation, so we made some modifications to the place. Uh, 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 uh. Now's our chance, old sport. Let's make a run for it while the coppers are busy. You're free. Free of the pesky contract and free to head to Vegas with your new friend. So that is the gnarly ending of Day Shift at Freddy's 1. But what if you choose to not help Purple Guy and to save the children? Fixing the Happiest Day arcade machine, completing their tasks, and getting their happiest day. Well, you head to the birthday party, but what? What the fuck? You're cornered by the police. You didn't know Phone Guy set you up since Purple Guy doesn't like you and never told you. And just as they're about to arrest you, Purple Guy sends out Farfor. Just as everything is derailing, this happens. <coughs> You don't know it yet, but this golden bear is the overarching protagonist of the entire series. An entity whose sole reason for existence is to help you save the victims of the corrupt Fassbender Entertainment. There's a lot you don't know yet. The story to these games seems to be completely linear on the surface, but below that, it's a complete convoluted mess. And that's Day Shift 1. There's nine other endings I didn't cover, but they're either just variations of each other or jokes. Honestly, this game is by far the worst in the series. Don't get me wrong, it's an amazing post, but the community has widely agreed that this one has aged like milk. It was so bad to where the creator did a visual rematch because the graphics and UI just aged that badly. Although, the community mostly thinks this because Day Shift 2 and 3 is where Direct Doggo begins to tell the best story a FNAF game has ever told. Welcome to Day Shift at Freddy's 2. Released on the 30th of June 2017, you are now working at the new and improved Freddy's. Well, okay, they can't all be new and improved. Most people don't want to work here after what happened at the old location. Tomorrow is the grand opening of the new Freddy's location, so you have a lot to do. Let's start with a tour from Phone Guy. This time around, the graphics have gotten a massive overhaul, and the animatronics are fat and plastic, and they also have a built-in criminal recognition system. They what? This is the prize corner, but this time round, there's a music box you need to constantly wind up. Let it unwind and, dear god, it will find you. You've also got to the kitchen, where the pizza made there is legally edible. You've got the magic ball pit, the arcade room, the party room, and finally the safe room, where you put on your murder suits. You don't even need to sign a contract this time round. Fastbender Entertainment already own you. So, it's time for day one. You can do basically whatever you want today, so personally, I interact with the animatronics, comforted the fat round plastic bear, and fought a possum? Oh, yeah, this game has turn-based RPG combat. You can even buy items to heal with from... Oh my god, it's you again. And this time, you can buy things like soda, guitars, cigarettes, tasers, ask Matt about his illegal fireworks. I mostly just searched around the pizzeria collecting tokens while preparing myself for the grand opening tomorrow. The mini-games you play after 6pm also return in the second game, with a massive pixel 
start to upgrade, but instead of furthering the story like in the first game, these mini games tell their own sub story of the Nightman. I'm I'm gonna be real. I have no idea what is going on in these mini games or who this guy is, and it doesn't ever come up again. So, uh. Yeah, anyway, day two. Today is the grand opening. You better head to the safe room and put on your suits. Oh, oh my god, it's it's you again. This time round, Purple Guy has the ultimate plan to shut down Fastbender Entertainment for good and gets rid of that pesky contract because if you leave, you're a loose end. He calls it Aubergine Man's handy dandy three step plan. It's foolproof, but he needs you to do some dirty work. So you head into the pizzeria, lure five children into the back, and. Don't trust the dolls who spend all day dressed in animal costume. <laughs> But just as you're about to leave for the day, you hear a music box coming from the prize corner. Bad choice, Echo. Really bad choice. We'll see you later. You won't stand between us and our happiest day. On the third day, it's time for step two of Dave's plan. But Fungi calls you into his office. Employee, I want you to be honest with me. Did you have anything to do with the kids who went missing yesterday? Employee, this is important. If you saw anything awful happening here, you tell me. Right? Over the next two days, you follow step two of Purple Guy's plan, tampering with the robot's criminal recognition system. But first, you of course need a wrench. From, from this guy. <laughs> The next day, you're basically free to do whatever you want. Personally, I went over to the kitchen to meet the chef, Ronaldo. I even cooked a pizza with him, though he's out of ingredients, so you, you gotta go get you gotta, you, the dumpster. The, why am I not surprised? This is a good time to mention that Day Shift 2 actually features some fan game characters, like Stone the Crow, who often appears at the dumpster, and also Candy the Cat, who threatens to I can't. I can't make this up. After I served my, uh, green pizza, the phone guy, I went to the bathroom and summoned Jimbo, the restaurant janitor, because he has information that I need. Purple Guy's security office computer login. If you head over to the security office and log in, you can read Purple Guy's diary. You can also leave constructive criticism on the Day Shift at Freddy's Game Job page and watch YouTube. Oh, oh, my, oh my god. On the fourth day, it's time to execute the final step. You head to the safe room with Phone Guy, who tells you he's going to tamper with one of the spring lock suits to make it go off during a show the next day with someone inside. What if we turn the blade tomorrow? Old boy, Tony, make Jimbo wear that suit. I'm basically proposing that we restock every spring lock in that suit. Are you really willing to murder an innocent janitor for your own gain? For your own freedom? Well, you've come this far. Proper guy tells you to fill it with silly pussy while he goes to get drinks at the store. But when he comes back, he lets you in on some secrets, especially about someone named. Henry. Purple Guy asks if he knew him. The game knows we don't at this point, but the only dialogue options contain lie. In summary, Henry helped Purple Guy run Fredbear's family diner back when Purple Guy went by the name William Afton, a name that's definitely familiar to everyone watching this video. Henry killed kids at Freddy's and Purple Guy killed kids at Fredbear's, the main competitor to Freddy's. But Henry tragically met his maker a few years back, which caused Freddy's to buy out the Fredbear character, which caused Purple Guy to want revenge. That's why he wants to get his place shut down. That's why he wants Fazbear Entertainment wiped from existence. So he changed his name to Dave and took Henry's last name, Miller. So, it's time for day five. Today, you and Dave arrive two hours late, so Jimbo the janitor is forced to wear the suit, and he makes a grave mistake, dancing in a spring lock suit, causing all the robot parts to come loose. It's far too obvious now. Phone guy knows it's you pulling the strings. Employee, let me tell you something. From the moment you got here, every damn thing that could have gone wrong has gone wrong. You lured off kids and killed them with Dave. You tampered with the robot and lied to me several times. I'm pretty sure you had something to do with that suit going off during the show. Let me tell you something, employee. I can see right through Dave 
Everyone can. The guy's transparent, but you... You've killed, tampered, lied, and stolen. And the best part, you've destroyed every lick of evidence. You're soulless. I can see it in your eyes. We all can. You look like you're decomposing. Whatever you are, you aren't human. Perhaps you once were, but you're certainly not now. Oh, and before I forget, you're fired. In my first playthrough, I thought that was the end. But of course... Dave has a plan. Dave is going to tamper with either of these two robots, and he wants you to pick which one. Basically, pick your ending. History repeats itself, huh? If you pick Foxy, then on the next day, you play from the perspective of Phone Guy. He begins by telling Matt to keep an eye out for you, and then he calls the LAPD, revealing that he's setting up Dave to once again save the restaurant from being shut down. You then fight to Dave, where he reveals that every Phone Guy is manufactured. All his memories are completely fake, and there are 50 more of him rotting in a factory. The phone guy at this location is completely different from the last one, yet he still seems to remember it. But the real question is who were they before? But first, Dave reveals what he did to Foxy, where Phone Guy is then killed by this monstrosity. And that is the fairly evil ending. But what if you pick Balloon Boy? Well, instead of Foxy appearing, Balloon Boy does, and he grabs a child and bites it, leading to the radical ending. But that's only two of the 22 endings in this game. So I'm gonna quickly go over the most important ones, starting with the pure evil ending. Where you follow Purple Guy's commands, pick all the purple dialogue options during your playthrough, and then pick Balloon Boy at the end. After the child is bit, instead of getting the radical ending, you're confronted with the real Fredbear. If you defeat him by just insulting him, he'll lose the will to fight, and you get the pure evil ending, where Dave himself is scared of you because you basically just defeated a god. If you get to this ending and do- oh my god, wow, that was a voice. If you get to this ending and do any further playthrough, then your character will have this smile. Next, the premature ending, where you tell the puppets that Dave is about to kill five kids, and the puppet catches him in the act, killing Dave in the Springlock suit. The rest of the endings are mostly joke endings, like when you buy a diving mask from Matt. Don't ask why he has this, like seriously, what the f- And then dive into the bull pit with the mask. You'll end up being stuck for eternity playing Scrabble with old bear consequences. It looks like Day Shift at Freddy's 2 somehow predicted the FNAF books. But there's one final important ending, the perfect ending, aka the happiest day ending. To get this, you need to name yourself Jack, which is later revealed to be the name of the orange man you play as. Then, decline Dave's offer and do all the puppet's tasks. It's pretty much the exact same as the first game, doing each of the children's last wishes. You then need to help Phone Guy by making the animatronics not smell like corpses, and then help him to trick Dave into wearing a suit rigged to kill him. Phone Guy even tells you some information about his backstory, revealing that all Phone Guys are just previous fast spent to entertainment employees that were springlocked. To hide the evidence, they were sent to a factory to be made into something useful. Fungi even reveals his name is Peter. Not the f***ing Family Guy character, I swear to god. <laughs> but what about our backstory? We've been playing as an orange man this entire time, never even questioning who we are and how we ended up here. It seems to be completely unanswered so far. Anyway, the next day, you trick Dave into wearing the suit and he gets springlocked. That was too easy. You put Dave in the safe room and then Phone Guy tells you his plan to border him up there. But first, wow, he decomposed fast. That's almost like impressive, holy shit. Phone Guy then tears up our contract and we're completely free from the shackles of Fast Mentor Entertainment. But Phone Guy tells you that there's one last party tomorrow and you're free to join if you want to. But then, after 6 p.m., you get to play a mini game from the perspective of someone bleeding out inside a suit and there's a voice talking to them, the real Fredbear. Can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me. It's me. I'm sorry we had to stuff you, it's just how things are around here. You know, many of us weren't always robots. Some of us were once children, but I'm sure you already knew that. The diner is a hive of sin and corruption, and it's spreading to other children's restaurants too. Many children have lost their lives here. That spring bonnie suit over there has a dead child in it. You're like them now. Your soul has left your body, and now you're an empty shell a husk. But 
I need something from you. We're robots, we can kill William and Henry, but it isn't enough. Killing those two murderers won't free the children's souls. The souls are misguided. Revenge can't free them. Revenge will just lead to more innocent people dying like you did. What those souls need is the party they never got to have. A large yellow bear can't organize a birthday party. We need a human, an adult who's willing to help us. If you wish to help us, I can give you life again. I can make your corpse live again. But once I give you life, you won't be able to stop until you free everyone who's waiting to be freed. Can you do this for us? I need you to promise that you'll save everyone. Please. And after, an orange man crawls out of the suit. This entire time, we were playing as a victim of Henry. That's why the dialogue option said lie when Dave asked about him. That's why we're bright orange and Peter said we look like we are rotting away. And in the first day shift at Freddy's, we broke that promise, following Dave and murdering the children that we were supposed to save. But. We can make it right this time. You're now at a crossroads. You have to go to Freddy's tomorrow if you want to see the children's happiest day. Or you can leave and never turn back. To get the good ending, you have to go back. But when you arrive, Dave manages to break out of the safe room, now as Dave Trap. And just like it can't get any more insane, Fredbear appears and fights Dave Trap, killing him once and for all. Fredbear thanks you for doing what he asked of you, saving the children. You're now free to go and catch the happiest day party with the many victims of Freddy's. It's really sad to be honest. There's so many lost souls, victims of other Freddy's locations that we never even saw. Since you're a part of the Fazbender Entertainment staff, the puppet asks you to do one last thing. On behalf of Fazbender Entertainment, we're sorry. We're sorry that we were the reason that none of you got to grow up, that none of you got to return home, and your parents never got to find out what you all became. After this, it's time for them to go. But you're left there still. You can't go with them. They're going somewhere that only souls can go, and since you were springlocked and brought back to life, your physical body and soul were separated. But just as you leave, you see a purple dog. This is the representation of Jack's soul manifested into the real world. The one that was separated from his body after he was killed by Henry. I'm proud of us. You freed them all. Every last one of them. Is there really such thing as redemption? Can anyone truly be redeemed? I don't know. However, if redemption is truly possible, I'm glad that you have been redeemed. There's one last cutscene from the perspective of Peter. He hears a knock at the door and when opened, it's you. Now that you're free from Freddy's, you have nowhere else to go. So, Peter lets you stay at his house for a while. And just as it fades to black, your soul settles in the house with you. And that is the end of Day Shift at Freddy's 2. The developer even left a note saying that this is the true ending and that the Day Shift series is finally over. But like any FNAF franchise, it always comes back. Released on the 29th of December 2018, Day Shift at Freddy's 3 is the grand finale of the series. Being set 36 years after the second game, you just bought yourself your very own Fazbender location. So instead of being a Day Shift worker, you are the boss of the restaurants, meaning you have the ability to customize your pizzeria to what ever you want. It's very similar to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, but with much more customization. But Day Shift at Freddy's 3 is way more than that, because it's split into four gameplay segments. The Tycoon segments, where you can customize your pizzeria. Then there's always a one month time gap before you head to the Day Shift segments, where all hell breaks loose. Then salvaging segments, which is pretty self-explanatory. And finally, the flip side. But I'll explain that mess later. For now, let's start at the very beginning, where you're introduced to the start your own Fazbender location kit. The kit includes your very own dining area, a safe room, and a bunch of tapes to guide you through your terrible business decision. But wait, 
Is that Dave? On your first day, you're free to name the restaurant whatever you want. And you can even open up to a few customers. But at the end of the day, you get a phone call. It's the LAPD who tell you that a child got abducted right outside your restaurant by something paranormal. Could it be Dave? Anyway, you can't worry about that right now because it's time for the next gameplay segment. After the end of each month, you will head to one of the three Freddy's locations, starting with the Day Shift at Freddy's 2 restaurant. Here, you can either pick to salvage Withered Freddy, Toy Freddy, or Balloon Boy. You know, it really feels like reliving a distant memory. It's been 36 years. Everything looks so desolate, like a shell of what it used to be. Personally, I picked Withered Freddy and decided to leave with him. After this, you head back home to your house? Well, it was Peter's house from the end of Day Shift 2, but he's dead now. It really has been 36 years, huh? You head up to your workshop to see a glowing arcade machine? This is your last chance to find their souls. Your last chance at redemption. You need to go inside the machine. You spawn into a a Freddy's restaurant? Wait, is that Dave? I thought he was dead. He must have survived being bitten by Fredbear. Dave explains to us that this is the flip side. A realm where dreams come to die and lost souls come to rest. It's a separate timeline, a place out of reality. You're able to move between the flip side and reality because you and your soul were separated. Dave's been here for years, or some form has. The more reasonable side of him has retreated to the flip side, while the feral side of Dave has ventured out there, still rotting in that springlock suit. You tell Dave about your quest to find the lost souls and Dave often to join you. Dave acts as basically your guide around the flip side. Click on any item and he'll tell you about it. And dear god, sometimes you, ju you just regret asking. Dave tells you that he left his lunchbox in the supply closet, so your first task is to head over there and get it for him. But you won't get very far until... Day Shift 3 goes full out turn-based RPG, unlike Day Shift 2, which really underutilized the fighting mechanic. Day Shift 3 even has abilities, multiple characters, and so much more. After you get Dave's lunchbox, he tells you to head to the security office, which has a lot of lost souls, and you find what you were bargaining for a bit too easily. This is the first of four lost souls we have to save in Day Shift 3. We quickly realize that the lost soul is a child that Dave murdered. Or was it? Because when confronting the spirit, it's revealed that the child was killed today. Meaning that the version of Dave in the outside world is still killing. He's the one outside your restaurant. You tell Dave to come up with a plan to save the next soul and that you'll meet him back here in a month. So, it's time to head back to your restaurant where you now have your very own phone guy. Scott basically runs the restaurant while you're away and helps you customize it to your liking by adding and removing things. I added a stage and then spent $350 on renovating the restaurant into the most like ugly ever. Once you're done, you can leave and come back in a month to check on how your restaurant's doing. These are the day shift segments of the game. They've definitely got the least screen time out of all the other segments, and they're definitely the most boring since it's just a cut down version of what we've been doing for the past two games. Today, your only task is to scrounge around the restaurant for money. For six hours. And now you head to the next Freddy's location to salvage another animatronic. And this time, it's a Freddy's location in Utah. The location from Five Nights at Freddy's 1. It's really dark here. You're completely alone, at least you hope you are. You can choose to either salvage Foxy, Freddy, or Chica. Personally, I chose Freddy. But just as you're about to leave, you realize you're not alone. This is Dave Trap, the feral side of Dave. He's been rotting in that Springlock suit ever since he was killed over a 30 years ago. And just like old times, here's an offer for you. Let him come back to your restaurant and go back to how it was, or decline his offer and abandon him. If you want the good ending, you have to abandon him. So... We now head back to the flip side, and Dave found us a lead to the next soul. But it's on the next layer of the flip side. Let me explain. The flip side is made out of four layers, each representing a different era of Fazbender Entertainment. But no one's ever gone below the third, and 
gotten back out. The second layer represents Fazbear Entertainment in the 80s, meaning the toy animatronics are roaming the layer, and we need to head down there to find the puppet in the prize corner. But little do we know, the puppet's name is Dee, who turns out to be Jack's sister, who was murdered back in the 80s by Dave and Henry. But one issue, Dave is standing right behind you. Yeah, it, it doesn't end well. D tries to fight you, but you can't win this fight. You have to run away. After, D and Dave talk about what happened and their past, with Dave basically lore dumping his entire backstory here. Basically, Dave met Henry through a traveling circus, and he followed the circus throughout America until it was shut down because children went missing wherever it went. After, Henry started Fredbear's family diner, and he needed a hand to help him, so Dave gave him all the money he had and joined him, starting his relationship with these robot animals. After this, Dee decides to join you and Dave in your mission to save every last soul. So you tell him to hatch a plan to save the next soul and that you'll come back again in a month. So it's time to head back to the restaurant again. Personally, I upgraded the security office and added the kitchen? Wait, this is a restaurant, how the f did we not have a kitchen? Next up is the day shift segment again. The restaurant is looking a lot better than before, but phone guy looks nervous. He tells you that the health inspector is coming, although you better look in the safe room first. What the fuck? For the past month, Dave Chap has been rotting in the safe room. He followed you home after you declined to help him, and he's now trying to convince you again. To get the good ending, you obviously have to decline his offer, but what if you accept his offer? Well, you and Dave Trap make a plan to get the restaurant shut down by taking another victim. But after, there's a cutscene from the past showing a girl in a red scarf at a birthday party. It's one of Dave and Henry's previous victims. There's also a man who seems to be the carer of the child who leaves out of frustration or boredom and gets drunk at the bar. But time passes quickly and the man runs back to the restaurant just to see that everyone's gone. After taking the victim with Dave Trap, you head back to the restaurant and frame one of your innocent employees for the murder. The next day, Dave tells you to come to the safe room, and inside is a suit. Throughout every day shift at Freddy's game, Dave has always promised you immortality, and he's finally going to fulfill that promise by making you just like him. After, there's another cutscene, seemingly long in the past, with Peter Kennedy in his house watching a news broadcast saying that you, Jack Kennedy, killed D Kennedy. Which isn't true, because just a few moments later, there's a knock at the door. Peter, I failed. I couldn't save her. Oh, yeah, by the way, Peter, the phone guy from Day Shift 2, is actually your brother. Like, uh, what? <laughs> why is everyone related here? And why does everyone just seem to accept that fact with zero acknowledgement? Anyway, after the cutscene, you head back to the restaurant, but it's completely boarded up and abandoned. But phone guy is still there. He's disgusted with you. He knows you murdered that child. And right before he leaves forever, he asks you one simple question. Was this your intention from the start? And you have to answer yes to get the bad ending. The game has completely corrupted you at this point, so much to where that after Fungi leaves, so does the narrator. The one entity that stayed with you the entire franchise, no matter what you did. You're a monster, and there's nothing left to do than to head to Vegas with Dave Trap, which is the end, right? It always is, but it's not. Dave tells you that he isn't happy. Vegas isn't like he remembered, so he takes you to a place that might cheer him up. Fredbear's Family Diner, or at least what's left of it. After it was shut down due to the bite of 83, Dave started constructing what he likes to call the Faz Bunker. If you don't know, he's basically talking about the underground facility that the fifth Five Nights at Freddy's game takes place in. Dave takes you down here and shows you a box. Inside contains a souvenir from every child he's murdered, and one of those souvenirs 
is a red scarf. The same red scarf that Dee wore on the day she was murdered. He then takes you to the final room, but here is where Dave comes to terms with what he's done. He tells you that he feels selfish for giving you a mortal life. He just wanted someone to join him in his misery, rotting away as a monster. But this is where Henry seems to take over. Dave tries to apologize, yet it's far too late. But Willie, you have given me a gift. Do you remember the third kid that you and Henry abducted? She was my sister, Dave. I was the night guard that you two pinned her murder on. You two have killed everyone that I've ever cared about. My sister, my brother Peter, even myself. It's time for you to pay a blood price. Will <laughs> You've become what you swore to destroy. Far worse than Dave or Henry ever were. You promised Fredbear that you'd save the victims of Fazbender Entertainment, but you've done nothing but cause more agony. You're a monster, and that is the evil ending of Day Shift at Freddy's. But let's rewind back, all the way to when Dave was in your restaurant asking to be taken back. What if you declined Dave's offer instead? Well, for the rest of the segment, you have to guide the health inspector around the restaurant and convince him to not shut down the restaurant because... Oh, oh my god, what the f***? You managed to bribe him by giving his kid a free birthday party at your restaurant, and you're free to keep operating. There's just... One issue, Walt, one of the employees, was springlocked. You have to make a decision, either send him to the factory where he's made into something useful, continuing the endless cycle, or bury him properly. Whatever you choose, it's time to head to the final Freddy's restaurant to salvage another animatronic. This time, it's the original Day Shift at Freddy's 1 location. You can either salvage Farfor, Breadbear, Cool Cats or Bonnie. All pretty cursed and remnants of what was. Personally, I decided to take nothing with me. Here is where you say goodbye to the Day Shift at Freddy's 1 restaurant for the last time. It's now time to head back to the flip side, where this time Dee and Dave have found the next soul. It's the phone guy from the very first game, the one that mistreated you and framed you to save himself. But you have to save them all, right? So you head to the next layer of the flip side, the third layer, and directly in front of you is exactly who you're looking for. He tries to escape, but after fighting off his foxies, you manage to corner him and convince convince him that you're there to help. You tell him that he needs to remember who he was before, and you get this cutscene. Henry? What are you- Oh, oh god! Stephen. Henry! Are those- Henry, what the f*** are you do? His name was Steven, and like every other phone guy, after he was springlocked, he was made into something useful. So we convince him to join us and then we head back to the restaurant where a phone guy asks us to stay and help watch out for Dave Trap while the health inspector's kid's birthday party happens. But oh my god, the inspector's kid is missing. You now have to convince Dave Trap to not kill the kid, but from all the noise, all the parents from the party enter the room where Jack does a speech about how he has to leave and how he's outnumbered. Dave doesn't seem to like that very much. After this, we head right back to the flip side where Dave tells us that the last soul, Peter, your brother, is trapped on the last layer. It's probably a trap, but 
we need to save everyone. This layer is completely broken. It's almost tearing itself apart, glitching and contorting with the theming being completely inconsistent. But eventually, you find Peter. He tells us that we've fallen directly into Henry's trap, and that this is exactly what he wanted. But the shadow dog from the end of Day Shift 2 appears again, the physical manifestation of our soul. It's revealed that the dog has been keeping Henry in the void, the fourth layer of the flip side. But that's keeping him alive. You need to fight him and finish it off once and for all. But before you do, there's one last loose end to tie up. You return to the pizzeria, where Fern Guy tells you that all the entrances and exits are completely boarded up. This is when Dave Trap arrives, who tells you that he came back with every single still remaining possessed animatronic. He's fallen right into your trap. You're going to burn the entire place down with every remaining remnant of Fazbender Entertainment inside, including you. But you're not done yet. Every soul is freed, but one remains to be punished, Henry. This is the fourth and final layer of the flip side, a place where no soul has ventured into and left. This is where you finally meet Henry and finish him off once and for all. Firstly, you have to take out all of the spite around him. They have a lot of health, so this is where I first use the abilities, especially Dee's healing ability. But eventually, Henry will begin instantly killing your friends one by one by telling them the crushing reality. Until he gets to you, you have nothing left to lose. He can't affect you. So, you revive your entire party who finally defeats Henry. You've won. You did it. You and your friends can finally move on. It's been decades since this all began, and this entire time, you've been fighting the corrupt Fazbender Entertainment, trying to bring it down and giving the victims their happiest day. But this, this is yours. You say goodbye, one by one to your friends, Stephen, Peter, and Dee, telling them that you might be able to go with them one day. But when you say goodbye to Dave, you reveal that you lied. You can't join them. You never will. Just like in Day Shift, to, they're going to a place where only souls can go, and you don't have a soul. But the dog, Blackjack, the physical manifestation of your soul, can go. You say goodbye to Dave as you watch the pizzeria, the final remnants of Fazbender Entertainment, a company that has stolen hundreds of lives, burn to the ground. You did it. You fulfilled your promise to the real Fredbear, and now you can rest. With five graves, one for each of your friends, and you. And that concludes the Day Shift at Freddy's franchise.